Hey guys, so it's time for another live game. I've got a 30-minute game against the player rated 760 in Rapid on the board, and we have the Sicilian. So I'm playing white, and I started with e4, and then c5, the Sicilian defense. Okay, I'm going to change things around a little bit. Uh, let's go for a closed Sicilian, I think. That's knight to c3. And I'm not going to play anything that I know here. I'm just going to try and follow basic opening principles. So let's get my king's bishop out. Always a slight advantage to get move your king's bishop and king's knight before the ones on your queen side because it might help you to castle earlier if you want to. Okay, we have a pawn move, a third pawn move in three three turns. Okay, just d3 always makes sense. Shores up my pawns, releases my bishop. Let's develop the bishop with a pin. Breaks the pin, that's fine. And now, I think, develop the knight, looks fair. You always have to be careful about maybe discoveries. Okay, so here I think this is one, two, three, pawn move number four in six turns. So, that is a cause for concern. I think a lot of beginners, a lot of players under a thousand, just make too many pawn moves, make them too loosely, think that they don't really matter. They do matter. I've just made a video today on um, pawns. It's called Pawns, 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 and it's uh, uh, it's all about how to judge pawn moves and really just stressing the, the point that, that every pawn move is a concrete change to the board. <clears throat> all right, so this bishop's got very little scope right now in the corner of the board. So I'm hoping to make use of this diagonal at some point. He could play g5, forcing me to there, but that's no bad thing. So now, development is almost complete. I need to move my queen. I'm just going to move it forward to d2. We're kind of focusing on the dark squares on this side of the board, really. So now we... I mean, my opponent's still one, two, three moves off castling, you see. Sorry, off, off uh, completing development. All right, so bishop attacks the knight, and the knight is currently defended only by a pawn, and I don't really want to move that pawn. So I could move my queen to e3. I could move the knight away, which seems a bit passive. I don't have any good squares to move it forwards. Well, these are all covered by pawns. The only square I could move to would be e1, and that's just not great. So I think I'm going to use my queen to defend the knight. See, my bishop here, my light squared bishop, is outside of this light squared pawn structure, so there's no way that, my, that that bishop can come back to the defense of that knight. Got ideas about trying to occupy this pocket here on d5. That's a very nice square. Might pop my bishop in there if knight takes. I've got knight takes, and the knight would be extremely strong. Okay. So, my opponent has decided to capture the knight with his bishop. So, again, in, in a sense, this has put him for, uh, a little way behind on development. I just need to make sure that I'm all safe. Yeah. Because if you think about it, he's played one move and then two. So that bishop has moved twice and it's now taken away. Um, it's been taken off the board and it's taken those two moves with it. Okay. So now black has taken the opportunity. This is a good move to get into there. So he's attacking my queen and also with a fork on this pawn on c2. So the only move that I could see to protect my queen and defend the pawn is to drop the queen back to uh, d1. Looking at that. Okay, now he's harassing the bishop. This is okay. So now what he's done is he's shattered his king side. So he's got too much space now on the king side. Got too much space really on the queen side. So where's he, how's he going to get his king to safety? So he's thinking about tactics, 
But this is this was not a real attack, this move. Because my bishop has a simple escape. So what he's done is he's significantly weakened his king side of the board again, because he's already pushed h6, uh, and he's got nothing to show for it. So I, I definitely want to kick away this knight from there. Uh, one option might be maybe move my knight into here and then push c3. That would be a way to do it. I don't like this knight being on my side of the board. That was my idea. My opponent has no right to steal it. Okay, so the queen's now attacking b2. I can simply defend that, I think, with a pawn push. Now again, knight to here looks very good because I'll be attacking the queen and the knight, so he's almost certain to capture. Then bishop captures, and I'm hitting two key squares again. So this f7 square might turn out... I mean, the bishop's attacking that square now. So if this knight were to move, for example, I've got queen h5. Alrighty. So let's pull out this move now. I think it's time. I'm just checking. So I'm attacking his queen. The knight is going to capture. Okay, so actually what he's planning here is he's planning to... Okay, he's planning to trap my bishop. So I nearly made a mistake there. I thought that my opponent's move was completely inconsequential and didn't give it any mind. Um, but that would be a mistake. So now I'm thinking... so Because, of course, if he now plays h4, then he has justified all, the, all these pawn moves because he would trap my bishop. So I'm going to have to play either h3 or f3 to give my bishop an escape. And I'm somehow feeling like f3 might be good, but then... The queen is on that diagonal. Okay, I'm going to play h3. Keeping my bishop towards the edge of the board, if it goes there to h2, where it's it's got this nice diagonal that way. Sure, we don't know which way the king's going to castle yet. Okay, he's pushed again, but again, unnecessary. He hasn't gained anything with that pawn move. He's undefended that square. All right, and now another pawn push. Okay. Um, I actually have... Okay. So I could, for example, capture... The knight can't recapture because I've got the queen on it. So it would be a free pawn. So if takes, maybe push h3, I push g3, and I've trapped my own bishop. But what I'm thinking now is to pull out this knight to d5, hit the queen, force the knight to capture... And I think that will be a little weakening for black, so let's try that. Knight captures I take with the uh, bishop. And now all eyes are on f7. So I'm thinking, what can I do? I mean, I could actually capture that with a queen now. Which I could have actually done before, no... No. See, now the knight has moved away from the defence of that. Okay, so he's, he's captured. This is not too bad for me. Uh, still, this knight is a pain. Um, so I'm not too concerned about this, because the pawn would actually be a human shield in front of my king. So I just moved my rook. So now, how about kicking the knight? Knight can't go there, there. Or there. Or there. So, yeah, I think the knight will end up moving backwards, which is fine, because then my queen can now come to f3 with a threat of mate, and also threatening the pawn on h3. Okay, that's interesting. So, now, I simply move the rook. No reason not to protect my rook. His knight is still under attack. Yeah, nice aggressive play with these pawns from my opponent. So there's me saying that he's made too many pawn moves and they've been a bit loose, but he was true to his word and followed through. Um, so he's actually two pawns up at this point in time. But my king is actually very safe. If this pawn here 
pushes forward. My king is covered by two um, completely solid defenders, which are actually my opponent's pawns. And the big difference is, if I have my own pawns there, my opponent could capture those pawns. My opponent cannot capture his own pawns. It's not legal in the game. All right, so there we go. Knight's moved away. I'll offer the knight a pawn. Okay, this isn't actually a checkmate threat right now because the king has d8, but it would be a significant threat. So let's say if knight takes, I've got queen to there. King has to move to here. Could he? he all right, you've defended. Ha ha! This guy's playing quite well, I have to say. Okay, I'm going to push the pawn, kick the knight. Now he may come there and attack my bishop. I may allow him to do that because if he takes, I can recapture with the e-pawn, opening up possibilities on the e-file for my rook. Oh no, instead he's decided to threaten the queen. So he's gone back to d4, that nice outpost. And also notice that he has now Knight to c2 with a fork on both bishops. So I think, am I going to be forced again to drop my queen back to d1? This is some good play. Very good play. For somebody rated 760, I am surprised. He now has a potential fork there, but the queen's still covering that square. Okay, he's missed that. In his excitement about his attack, he missed the opportunity. This rook is now bound to that square because it's, it's got to stop my queen from coming in to f7. I could try and sweep up these pawns here, but I don't think there's any real need. So what I'm thinking about now is, in terms of strategy, look at this nice pawn structure still, right? One, two, three, four, five here. Not sure about that queen move. Not sure of the point of that. So what I'm thinking is maybe queen out to here and maybe lift the rook round to f3. I could also just do a pawn break with the f pawn as well. So here's the question, do I want to bring my queen out where it's pinning that pawn, or do I want to bring my queen back and play it a bit more conservative? I'm happy playing my queen back at this point in time. Am I? Am I? Do I want to live a bit more dangerously? Okay, let's think about this. What danger is there from his queen? Could come in here and attack this pawn. Okay. Is that it? Is that the only threat? Is that all you have, Saruman? Hey, all right. What are we going to do? Okay, come back. No gosh. Sometimes in chess, you, you have to take an opportunity immediately. Okay, the queen's uh, bishops now come in to the attack. How about f4? not defended enough. What am I worried about? Am I worried about bishop coming in there? No, not really. I've got two bishops still. How can I make life difficult for my opponent? What's the most evil move on the board right now? And no rush to grab these pawns. They are my friends. I just lift my rook slightly. That's adding a defender to that pawn and adding a defender to that square as well. So he now, if he had ideas about putting his bishop in there, then you can say goodbye to that idea. Think about, so we've both got a dark square bishop left on the board and my pawn structure is light squared. So both bishops can move around quite freely. 
I may think about moving my queen to c2 now. See, I have the material advantage right now. Yes, he's two pawns up, but those two pawns aren't hugely material. And yes, they are my g and h pawns that started off here, um, which are now off the board, but he's replaced them with his own pawns, which does not harm my king defense one bit. See, I think just general coordination now. Bring my queen up there. Then I could think about pushing pawns and kicking his queen around. Maybe push up now here on the queen side of the board. A very good game by somebody rated under a thousand. Right, now he has initiated the F pawn break. Which I have to admit is a bit of a surprise. Because his king is now very looking very isolated. Now, if uh, if my rook wasn't there, see, I've got a queen check, and that would also be a fork, potentially winning the bishop. So I'm going to move my rook to here, which stops his queen coming from to there, there, or there still. And now I have the threat of queen h5 with a double attack, fork by the queen on the king and the bishop, and. The king will either have to move or block with the rook, and either way, I grab that piece. Okay, that does not concern me. I'm going to go ahead with my assault. The queen cannot get into my territory. We're okay. Okay, so he failed to spot the reason why I made that move here. And you always have to think, why did my opponent make that move? What has changed on the board? Now, I didn't need to particularly didn't need to defend c3 but what it's doing is it's opening up that, that diagonal okay I'll grab the bishop with check good this is all good all right now so now I'm thinking about queen into e7 check king can't go there 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 it's got to be good hasn't it maybe able to grab this pawn in fact, I'm guaranteed to grab that pawn because the king can't go to either of these two squares. So now, grab the pawn with check. This is looking very nice indeed. I would like to be able to push my A pawn, but it would leave my B pawn undefended. But that's not a problem, necessarily. Okay. Um, I have another check here. King can't go there, there, so or there. And then if I play that, king will be forced to there. And then... No, I can't capture on. Uh, I'd love to take on that. That's not going to work either. Maybe it's time to bring in the dark squared bishop. Capture that pawn because there's a lovely move here, uh, pinning the queen and winning the queen. Wouldn't be surprised now if he starts just pushing pawns in a desperate attempt to gain something, but I think it's going to be too little too late. As soon as that queen goes, my queen gets his pawn. And uh, so let's say move one, two, three with check, captures. Hmm. I might have to try and force something with more checks here. So again, these uh, very advanced pawns could prove to be my opponent's strongest pieces in a way. Very interesting ending this though. So what I want to do now is I want to be able to force the checkmate. So, if, okay, right, that's just a mistake. He really needed to push these pawns down, I think. So now I have this, which wins the queen, one way or another. He could capture my rook, that's fine. I take his queen, and then I'm going to move in there and there, and it's going to be checkmate. 
remarkably good game though. Did not expect this kind of performance from someone rated 870. No, 760, wow. Very good game. This is a player with a future. Smatch. Well done. Awesome game. But again, typified by uh, blunders, you know, dropping the knight uh, early on. I don't have to recapture the queen immediately. I can actually go in with a check now. This is an in-between move. I think I can actually force mate without having to capture the queen. The king's got two squares and that I think is checkmate. There we go, checkmate. Oh, well done, S Max. Uh, fantastic game. Um, but again, you see typified by blunders. So dropping that knight, and again, like we see so many times, we're finishing a 30 minute game with 20 minutes still on the clock. So one key thing, if you're gonna play a 30 minute game, use your time, right? This guy might as well have been playing a 10 minute rapid, you know, rather than the 30 minute. If you're gonna make your moves that quickly, then don't give your opponent 30 minutes if you're only gonna spend 10. It just doesn't make sense. But yeah, really good game. Really interesting. Uh, very well played, I have to say, by my opponent. And I think if he carries on playing like this, he's going to be going above 1,000 and a, a lot further before you know it. Okay, thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed to Chess Bootcamp, please subscribe so that you don't miss any of the videos that come out. Otherwise, I uh, hope you've uh, got something out of this and I'll see you soon.